Uh, Opinions expressed on ACB Radio are those of the respective program contributors and cannot be assumed to serve as endorsements of products or views of the American Council of the Blind, its elected officials, or its staff. Hello everyone and welcome to Herbie's Cooking Corner for November 16th, 2021. My name is Herbie Allen. Welcome everyone who is listening either on Zoom or on ACB Media 5 or the podcast. Today we're going to have kind of an interesting, maybe a little bit more relaxed cooking corner where I'm going to do a little bit of a demo and we're going to have plenty of room for you all to talk and to ask questions as I'm going to talk about a lot of the appliances that I use and why. I'm going to also talk about techniques like how to identify various things, some of the methods I use for that. And we're going to talk about cooking safety as well. Oops, I say that as I bang a pot. Along the way, we're going to make a tasty little treat, which is going to be the pre-made white chocolate chip cookie dough. It's a form of cheating, I know, but it works. Okay, guys, so let's start by just giving you a little bit of a virtual tour of my kitchen. We live in an apartment, and our kitchen is rather small, actually. It's not the tiniest kitchen I've been in, but it's perhaps not the biggest either. I'd call it, uh, if I may use the Goldilocks scenario, just right. I do not like big kitchens myself. Too much space. I I find that daunting. I actually prefer, I don't want to be cramped, but I actually prefer a smaller space to work in where there's only so much, only, you know, like only so much space to work with. You kind of can know the territory a lot better and not have to do as much guessing. I remember this last summer we were at a guest house and the kitchen there was ginormous. And it took me half an hour just to find where the table was from the counter to, uh, you know, give Chanel her breakfast. So poor thing had to uh, starve forever just because I couldn't find the table. Okay, maybe it wasn't half an hour, but it certainly felt like it. So this kitchen is what I would call just right. First of all, we have our fridge when you come into the kitchen. It is a standard fridge freezer combination. I have my head in the fridge right now. I don't know if I sound any different. What I like about this is it's a very, it's your standard fridge freezer. It is not smart or anything like that. And I am personally not a big fan of smart tech when it comes to the kitchen. I prefer simple appliances that do the job and, but there is some relationship with smart tech and how I use it. And I will demonstrate that. A little bit. If you've been on previous cooking calls, though, you kind of know what I'm talking about, just like with timers and stuff like that. Next, we've got cupboards. You get the idea. We've also got a double sink that does have some dishes in it. To the left of the sink, I've got um, a dish rack and then my beloved Keurig device, which makes the coffee. And you, some of you, if you've been on past shows, you've heard me run it in the past before. Okay, going over to the other side here, I've got a nice little walk-in pantry. It's, you can walk into it, but that's about it. You can't close the door or anything like that. And then we have the stove slash oven. This is an electric stove. I have worked with both electric and gas. And gas I like better for the stovetop, electric I like better for the oven because I like things to heat up more quickly in the stovetop, but I found I could overcook things in the gas oven. Um, Granted, it was miniature sized, so that might have been a factor, but um, that has been my preference with what I have worked with. And let's talk about safety a little bit because already i'm not uh, being good at that i noticed some popcorn from the other day was still on the stove um it's a good idea to kind of keep your stove clean at all times or at least clean of objects because what you don't want is uh, anything to potentially catch on fire with that the other things to keep in mind is um cleaning underneath the burners as well. Now this is a situation where I wish I had one of those newer stoves that had the flat surfaces. Cause I would think that would be so much easier to clean. I've heard that they have stoves that have the little depressions where you can set the 
pan in the pot in. And like I said, that'd be nice because you wouldn't have to clean underneath anything. But if you're like me and your stove has burners, you kind of have to try to keep those clean and that can, it's not the most pleasant thing to do. Okay, other appliances that I have here. I actually have an air popper for popcorn. I don't, uh, I do use the microwave stuff occasionally, but not a big fan of it. And then I have an air fryer. And I forget the actual make and model of it, but um, they will talk a lot more about those on the It's Electric. But this air fryer is a beauty. I got it this last summer. It can air fry, it has a grill plate, it can broil, bake, toast, and uh, do any kind of cooking. I use it primarily for the air fryer and the grill. I still have an old fashioned uh, toaster to the left of the stove here that I use for toast. It works quite well. Um, and let's see, of course we have various things. I have my silverware drawer. And I do try to keep that organized, knives, forks, spoons, things like that. Um, so I kind of know where everything is. And next, here's the uh, more interesting drawer perhaps, where I actually have various, uh, various uh, appliances. I've got a can opener, just the manual type. And that has always worked well for me. I've never needed the electric ones or anything like that. You know, you... Um, use the can opener by placing the grooves on the can lid and you turn the little dial. I have a whisk. Now one blind adaptive piece of equipment I do, I also have a garlic press. I also have two double spatulas and I've talked about these before. These are really nice for when I'm wanting to flip stuff because balancing is a very challenging thing for me not having any sight and i'm guessing it is for a lot of you as well too so what's nice about the double spatula is um it's like a it, it works like tongs so i'm taking it out here it's two spatulas that are on a little hinge and you can hear i'm kind of banging them together lifting it back up and what you do is you slide the bottom spatula underneath the food that you are wanting to flip and then you press down with the top spatula and you sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge to get a grip if there's too much things in the pan or whatever so you kind of grip it and you flip it so you grip and flip so that is really cool. You can get them you know from blindness organizations. I think you can find them in regular stores too. I also had a rubber double spatula. I did not like that one as much. Um, I much preferred the uh, metal ones that I've, that I use. I, I felt like they gripped better. So that is how I handle flipping. Okay. Let's see. I also have whisks and uh, things like that. Now on the other side of the kitchen here, I do have measuring cups. I got a full set from Blind My Smart. And what, I actually have two sets of measuring cups here. But what's very cool about the Blind My Smart one is it has print and braille. And it goes beyond just your standard four cup measuring cup. So it goes from two, uh, a full two cups which occasionally I actually do use um, for things that call for like two cups of water or whatever. I will use that and it goes down to like, I think an eighth cup. Um, so there you go. That is kind of cool to have around. I usually don't use the smaller ones as much. I'd probably never go beyond the fourth, but there we go. Okay. That's it on that. Does anybody have any questions before I move on to the next part of my little lecture? Uh, Melissa, do we have any raised hands? No. Nope. Okay. Very good. Um, 
One thing I will mention beforehand, the, um, somebody had mentioned that oh, they like... Oh, someone just raised their hand. Oh, okay. Uh, Nora, you can go ahead and unmute. Nora. Nora, you are muted. Make sure you've hit the got it button first if you've not done so, and then you should be able to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh I'm sorry. It took me a while. I'm on my computer, so resting up my iPad. Anyway, my question is, when you're working on the stove, do you have any thing called uh, dot, a dot it or dot something to keep? Uh, since I have no vision, but some people who can't see and they use the stove, you have to have the braille dots on it. Okay, that is a very good question. So I am very happy to work with a stove that has the standard dials on it. And, you know, I, I this is an apartment, so it's not even my choice. But even if given the choice, this is what I'd rather work with. I am not a big fan of the digital ovens, the smart ovens. And I do love technology. Don't get me wrong. I just don't like it as much for the kitchen. And oh. so... For the, stand, for the stove and the oven, we have our standard dials to work with. So when I'm on the stovetop, I know which dial is for which burner. Mm -hmm. um, especially the two outer burners, because those are the ones I use. But So the left controls the left side. The dials on the right control the right side. And then there's a center dial for the oven. Right. And one more question. Um, if you want yep. to know, let's say, if you want something to bake for 350 degrees, can you know where the numbers are somehow? So I can tell just by the dial position. And mm. I, you know, I will kind of just guess. So I know like straight up and down when I turn the middle dial, it's like 375. So if I tilt it a little bit to the left, it's 350. A little bit to the right, it's 400. Um, if I turn it all the way to the right to where it clicks, it will be on broil. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that lesson the hard way a long time ago when I uh, accidentally ruined one of my mom's beef dinners and I thought I was turning off the stove and instead I turned the dial the wrong way around. This was when I barely knew how to use the thing. Oh, so you. I just tell by the position of the dial. Um, if you have a digital oven, I would um, <clears throat> do one of several things. One, if it actually has buttons. See if there's any preset temperatures that you can use. I had uh, we were I was living with a family once, and they were talking about how complicated their oven was. And it turns out that if they'd have done a little bit more exploring, they, which they ended up doing when forced into it, they found that their oven actually had a preset for 350. Mm -hmm. And so if you at least have that, then you can factor that into how you time things. So if you need to bake something at 400 for 30 minutes, okay, you're at 350, so give it a little bit more time than the 30 minutes. Um, you may also find that there may be, you know, depending on the oven, I don't know if they have things that will go like move it five degrees up or down or whatever. Um, you <laughs> can also, you can also, you know, if it's a flat screen oven, then I would find have somebody braille, you know, key things on it. Or if you don't read braille, then use like puff paint and have like, you know, or something like that where you can know, label something as O for off or, you know, something like that. So those are some tips that I would do if I was faced with a digital oven. And there are some that you can control with smart devices now. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing in the sense that you may need help getting that set up and on your Wi-Fi. And so then you could ask Siri or Alexa or Google, you know, set my oven to blah, blah, blah. You are at a disadvantage though, if your internet goes down. So even if you do have a smart oven, have an alternative um, way that does not involve the internet just in case. And I'll give you some great examples of why I would never want that for here. Like we have hurricanes here in Houston 
And we've had situations where we have lost internet, but we still have electricity. And so I'm still able to cook because we have the electricity, but I would not if I was dependent on Alexa or Siri or whatever to set my oven. So uh, anyway, Nora, I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other raised hands? Yep. Uh, Patricia? Patricia, welcome. Uh, thank you for the welcoming. Um, I wanted to, the, about the spatulas, uh, those are the, do, the double spatulas are, not, are um, metal, right? Yes. Okay. The ones I use are metal. Though I've also seen silicone ones, but I think I personally prefer the metal ones. Oh, okay. Well, uh, what about that? I was I was uh, reading a a book. It's a Braille book that they have at the National Braille Press about air fryers. Mm -hmm. And um, it was saying they were saying that um, uh, that when you're turning things over in an air fryer that you should use silicone. Uh, yeah, you should use silicone as a spatula. Ah, that is good to know, and I will keep that in mind. I do have a back a silicone one, actually, so I will use that for next time I'm in the air fryer. Well, thank you for mentioning that. Okay. All right, excellent, Patricia. Thank you. Yes, even I can learn things on these calls too, guys. Okay. So what can I tell you about how to identify things? Well, let's talk about that. And, um, you know, question was asked, you know, in general, how can you identify things? Well, there are two primary ways I do this to feel and with um, a little bit of technology. Now, if I can find what I want here, which I cannot. Okay, it has disappeared on me. My barcode scanner that I sometimes use, which is badly at, oh, here it is. So I have one of these. There we go. Okay, I'm going to reset this. There we go. This is an ID Mate Summit. It is kind of a, it's a mini barcode scanner. I've had this for a long time. I like it a lot better than the phone for scanning just because it is omnidirectional, meaning that it will help you out in finding the barcode a lot easier than using the phone will. I do use apps on the phone like Seeing AI and all that. And then if I really want to talk to somebody, I could use Be My Eyes. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not a big fan of that as much unless I absolutely have to. So I can use the uh, barcode scanner to scan things. It's especially useful for cans. Package size. 10 ounces, 283 grams. Product description. America's number one enchilada sauce. Instructions. Refrigerate unused portion. Warnings. Contain soy and wheat ingredients. Ingredients. Water, tomato puree, water, tomato paste, modified corn starch, soybean oil, dry bread chilies, sugar, salt, mana sodium glutamate, citric acid, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, corn, soy and wheat, onion powder, red pepper, unalyzed beast extract. Spice, garlic powder, natural flavor. Serving size, 0.25 cup. Serving per container, 4.25 calories per serving. You get the idea. This is the exact same stuff that you get on a can that a sighted, you know, that a sighted people can just a glance at and read, and it's telling me all that in real time. Um, these barcode scanners are kind of, they still are around, and they are super expensive there's even better ones than the one i have um and unfortunately you do have to use like sd cards or whatever to update the databases and stuff like that 
And so a lot of people, you know, do use their smartphones instead. I just, you know, I find this barcode scanner easier myself. Um, because, but uh, that is what works for me. But there's plenty of other things I can tell just by how they feel. So let's take the fridge again, for instance. And um, there oh, is a raised hand. You go ahead. Yes. Uh, Tony. Tony. Um, Well, it's not Tony, but it is DJ. Uh, DJ, phone. all right. Yeah, quick question. Uh, what you were just displaying right there, uh, voiceover kept mouthing off and everything, so I get quite the uh, gist of what it is and where can you get it from? So the uh, barcode scanner that I have, it's from Envision America. You can find them on the web. Like I said, they are pretty penny. Um, I think they still sell them, but and I think they've been having some clearance sales too. Um, but um, what they are is just this little scanning device. Somebody thought, well, I accidentally left it somewhere and they thought it was a laser. Um, it has a little memory card inside it and it uses the old double talk voice. And uh -oh. what you do is you turn it on and then you just kind of wave the product in front of the can, like the scanner and just kind of start turning it around and it will, it uses lasers to guide its vision. And so it sees from a much wider angle. And then it'll scan the stuff and it'll read what it has in its database. And there are some things it does not have, but it does have a mode where you can at least get the barcode number and then you can put that into Google and, you know, research the product that way. Oh, okay. Because I was just sitting here thinking, you know, I can use something like that when I'm at work, when I'm having to uh, put all of our two liters away into the walk, into the, uh, into the freezer. Yeah, because you know, sometimes what I do is I use my uh, my phone with uh, either uh, seeing AI or sometimes I'll you know if it gets you know too hectic I will call be my eyes and they will tell me what it is that you know I do. But when I heard you working that thing, I think man, that's a do I did it. I can use and it really would go good. So uh, thanks a bunch for for uh, sharing that. Thanks a bunch. You're welcome. Um, there's another product for the phone you can try. It's called Envision AI. It's separate from in the company that sells the barcode scanners. And the one I have that I demoed, by the way, is called the IDMate Summit. Um, there is an even newer one that can I think is a little bit better, but um, I used to use the older IDMate um, back in the day for my vending job, actually. So I used it to identify bottles and chips and whatnot so that mm, okay okay and for things that could not identify i could record my voice and when it would see the barcode then i'd have to hear myself so yeah, that's always good right thank all you. right thanks again. yeah well thanks again irvy good job uh, you're welcome dj and i uh, hope you're getting a lot of stuff out of this call today because i know uh, you'd requested that i do some more in kitchen safety okay yes yes thank you so first of all, one I think I do want to mention with kitchen safety, um, if the kitchen gets too hot, escape the heat. It's starting to get a little bit hot in here because I had the oven preheated for the uh, chocolate chip cookies that we're actually about to make. Um, okay, but I have the oven closed right now. That's how we're keeping it safe. I'm not going to open the oven until I'm ready for it. But if the heat gets too much, I do have a kitchen fan, which I am turning on now. And that'll help take away some of the heat. It can also, it's also great for odor extraction and uh, stuff. Excuse me. Making sure that all my bottles and stuff like pan are to the left of the stove. Nothing is on it. It's got a pan and a pot that really need washing. I'm going to move them to the side for now because uh, they will take up the sink. But um, make sure there's no wires. We do have a an electric skillet wire, which I don't know why I keep plugged in because I haven't used it in a long time. So um, let's get that completely out the way. 
So we don't want, you know, like any electrical wires or anything like that near our stove because that would uh, create, could, uh, has the potential to create sparks. So just checking the area. We're not going to be using the stove top, of course, but still, um, that's how we do that. Okay, now how can you identify things by feel? Well, if you know what you buy, that really helps. So, for instance, I can see just by looking in the fridge by feel, I know I've got a stick of butter, half you, a half stick of butter that um, is opened. And further down, let's see, I've got a mayonnaise jar here in the door. I know it's a mayonnaise jar by two things, the plastic nature of the jar and the very specific lid that it has, especially uh, we use Hellman's mayonnaise. And I can tell that it is that. Okay, what else do we have here just in the door? By, and I'm telling you all this now by feel, I'm not using any foam cameras or anything like that. I've got a half-used bottle of Hidden Valley Ranch. And ranch is one of those things that can look similar to barbecue sauce, so you do have to be careful. But if, you, if they come in different sized bottles, um, that's one way you can kind of tell a difference. It is a big plastic round it has a bottle that's rectangular with a narrow neck and a distinct lid. Sometimes a new ranch bottle will, like new ranch bottles will have like a full paper thing around it when you've not opened it. Behind it, I've got a container of Hershey's chocolate syrup. Hey, I wonder if that would go well on the cookies. Probably not. Um, anyway, but I can tell it's chocolate syrup by the bottle here has a little handle it has a flip top lid and um just by the material of the bottle i don't know how to describe it let's see i've got a little jar of tabasco sauce and i'm sorry a little bottle and tabasco sauce is very unique in that uh, how the lid feels for one thing it's not a round lid. It's kind of, I don't know what you call like a octagon maybe or something like that. And it's in, on this tiny little bottle. And then I've also got a jar of horseradish. And I can tell it's horseradish just by it. It's a glass jar with a plastic lid. Let's see, to the left of that, I've got a box with some more stick butter. I've got a mustard bottle. This is very easy to uh, tell because mustard comes in the squeeze bottle. It has a flip top lid. It looks a lot like the chocolate Hershey's chocolate syrup, but um, it's a smaller bottle and it does not have a handle. And now I've also got a ketchup bottle to the left of it. It is a squeeze bottle that is not as big as the ranch bottles. It's a slightly different shape and it is a little bit thinner and the top is flatter and rounder. It's not an actual, it, it's a true lid, not just a bottle top. So those are some distinctive clues right there. Just by looking at my fridge door, I know what something is just by feeling it. Okay. Now let's see, how about in the fridge? I've got bread, I can feel that, and oh, there are my cookies. If something falls out of the fridge, oh dear. And let's get out the cookies, because I know this is what you guys are wanting, I'm sure. And uh, they do sound good to me too. So, um, frozen stuff, just, you know, that can also be identifiable too. One thing that I do with frozen things is in some cases, I will take the packaging out the box so I can feel, A, it saves room, and B, then you can just tell by feel what it is. And so, like, for instance, if I just feel in my freezer, okay, we do have a box of hash brown patties. Those have to remain in the box. But we do have chicken strips and oops, tater tots. Those don't, don't come in a box. French toast sticks. Um, those come in a box. Uh, let's see. Uh, egg rolls. There's another thing I can tell by feel, but if I was just to feel the box, I mean, different boxes feel different ways, and so you kind of can tell. 
But what you will need the boxes for, if you don't know the product at first, you will need the boxes for scanning purposes, and th those will have the instructions and stuff. So keep that in mind. Before you throw the box away, you may need to know the instructions first. Okay. Are there any questions on that? On how to identify things? Melissa, do we have any raised hands? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right, guys. Now we're going to get on to the cookies. So this is the Nestle Toll House cookie dough. Hey, I wonder if I can uh, barcode scan this. I usually don't because I already know what it is. But um, let's try this real quick because we can. Packages can be the most tricky thing to scan, um, but I, you know, I prefer this more for bottles and whatnot than. Okay, that's how you're going to be. Okay. Get the idea. Um, okay, so good thing I actually skipped. All right, who have we got? Hi, um, Hello. this is Ann from Atlanta. Um, what were you using to scan it with? So, this was the ID Mate Summit, and um, ID Mate Summit. It is, like I said, it's over a thousand dollars. I don't know what the current price is because they're doing a lot of clearance sales. Um, so it's not to, it's not a cheap device by any means, um, but it's called the the one I have is the ID Mate Summit. I've had this for a number of years, actually going back to 2012. So it's uh, worked really well for me. Yeah. Have you ever used Seeing AI? I have you seeing AI, and if somebody else is wanting to talk, can you please raise your hand and yeah, we will get I, to you? It's, it's hard to, for them to see me because I'm the co-host, but I was just going to oh. tell you, they're no longer making the Summit and the Quest. Okay. No longer manufacturing those. That's kind of oh. what I thought. Um, I think you can still buy a few that are used, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think you can still buy a few that are uh, refurbished maybe, but they have actually, they sent out a discontinuance notice, because I have the Quest, I have the newer one. Um, mm -hmm. They're having a lot of difficulty maintaining them, um, and so they can no longer get a lot of the hardware, so they're no longer selling them as new products at least. Okay, that is very good to know. Um you get a lot of you know and it really is unfortunate i do find i mean i do love my phone and i do use seeing ai i do use envision ai i've used SuperSense. i still find the barcode scanner myself the easiest to use i totally agree with you yeah um because it's just much you know the phone has not even you know the phones have gotten better cameras but it's not the same it's not the same as focusing with the phone you have to be a lot more precise, and so. Where's the barcode um, scanner? 
So it's kind of, you've seen them in store. They've had them in stores for a long time. It's just over the last 20 years. Now they talk to us as well. Um, they read the barcode on a product and then it taps its internal database. And so in this case, it uses like the, it, it's called omnidirectional because it can use lasers to focus from multiple directions. And so it just, you wave it and once it sees the barcode, it beeps and then, you know, for like, they use it in stores, you know, for like pricing items and, you know, finding out the price and whatnot. In our case, we use it to read the instructions on, you know, the cookie dough, like you just heard. So that's, you know, I, I, um, if anybody else wants to add to that description, feel free. All right, so um, there you go. So hopefully that answers your question there, Anne. Thanks. You are so welcome. All right. Um, okay, so it's a good thing I actually did scan this because I've forgotten that I'm not supposed to grease the cookie sheet and I found out these are chocolate chip, not white chocolate, but thank you, Walmart, for not telling me about this little change. That's okay, though. Um, Okay, so it says to split along the freezer line. We will try to do this, but this can be so problematic. You know what? But before we do that, why don't I wash up because I've been touching many different surfaces. Um, can somebody give me a time check, please? How many minutes? 9.38. 9.38, okay. So we'll have just enough time to get this uh, done. Okay. So I'm drying off here. That's oh, still a little bit of soap. Oh, you want to be stubborn today. So we have 22 minutes. We're doing great time-wise, guys. So, all right. So I've already got the cookie sheet out. Um, cookie sheets are easy to identify. They are really big, um, a lot bigger and than your pans, flatter edges, you know, not as deep and... There you go. Okay, I'm not going to cut along freezer edges. I'm going to use scissors. So I have a pair of kitchen scissors that come as part of a knife block that really work for me. So I'm just using the scissors to cut the package. I'm making sure my fingers are well away from the blades of the scissors. So I just put insert the package seam into the path of the blades. And okay, we can actually put these scissors back because they didn't actually touch any product. Just the packaging. Well, better be safe than sorry. Um, and now what we are presented here with is, so the cookie dough, I'm, I'm gonna, let's see. Okay, this is now where we can tear a little bit. The cookie dough is sitting in a little flat box in the packaging here so i'm going to um close this air fryer oven lid i'm going to throw the package away i'm going to set the box to the right of the cookie sheet so my layout is i've got the stove to my left cookie sheet and then cookies and you don't want um, the box anywhere near the stove so now the challenging thing is to put We'll pull them apart. And uh, I think these are meant to be that big. Okay. Um, these can be, these are a lot easier. So these are the squares. These are not the logs. And so I'm just kind of having to guesstimate a little bit how to separate them out. And because um, these have kind of unfortunately melted together. Okay. And I know I'm not going to eat it, but and I know they say not to consume the raw cookie dough, but folks, cookie dough is really good. Um, <laughs> you, but you, it does contain raw eggs, so you uh, decide for yourself if you want to take that chance. If you have any allergies or anything like that, or have compromised immune systems, probably not. And it might be safer to eat the cookie dough you make than the stuff they make. But then if cookie dough is so bad, why do they put it into ice cream? I don't know. That, that, that goes beyond the scope of this call here. 
So we may have some interestingly shaped cookies, but what I'm trying to do is make sure they're in little small chunks and separated out. Uh, but as I said, I'm more of a, I cook more than I bake. And so I prefer to, you know, put together a meal rather than bake something. This is kind of not bake. It, it's cheating because we don't have to make the cookie dough, but, um, there we go. So, um, but yeah, guys, if you're able to at least get a refurbished barcode scanner, if you want to take that chance, they can save a lot of time in the kitchen because it's just much more quicker. I mean, the phone's great for what it can do. Don't get me wrong. Um, I was hoping with LiDAR, we'd have more of a barcode scanner type experience. That's not the case, but. And the phone is great for some things like, you know, it can do, um, well, the Quest can actually do some of the lookup stuff now that my ID Mate Summit cannot. I still wanted to get a Quest, but just never had the money. Um, I actually got the Summit because my friend no longer needed it and they were selling it at a good price. So I actually got the uh, Summit refurbished, well, not refurbished, but used. They just hadn't really used it that much. So... I t took advantage of that, and um, anyway, okay, I've now thrown the cardboard little box thing away. Now I'm going to open the oven, and I'm going to stand to the right side of it. Now I don't mind facing the heat straight on, because um, I know exactly where I'm going. If you do not like to do this, you can either stand to the side and try to put the cookie sheet in or the pan or whatever. I don't recommend this. So I, what I would say is put it in, then preheat your oven and factor that into your timing. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm standing right in front of the oven, sliding it in, sliding it back. And now I will use smart tech to set the timer. I will either use my Apple watch or my device. And we use the Apple Watch today. Set timer for nine minutes. Nine minutes, counting down. And there we go. And now it is counting down. So does anybody have any questions on either anything I've talked about or is there anything else you would like me to go over with kitchen safety or appliances? And just raise your hand and we will call on you. And Melissa, do we have any raised hands? Uh, yeah. One. All right. Who do we have? One. One. <clears throat> Hello, this is Juan Medina. How are you? I am doing wonderful. How about you? Good, good. Um, um, I'm, I am, I'm, wanted to ask about the um I, I know how to cook more on the stove than on the oven but my question is how um how do you like when it's time to when it's time to, you know how when it's okay nine minutes right so sometimes you know some ovens take a little longer to bake stuff like how do you know how do you know when they're actually done I mean I'm blind myself and we you know <clears throat> um, I know we distinguish by smell and stuff like that, but like, what are other strategies to do that? And um, and also, I wanted to make a suggestion as well. You can use the pen friend as well, besides the ID mate. I don't use any of that, um, but I do have a pen friend at my apartment, and also, um, I have the little touch dot, the little bump dots as well. All right, the pen friend. I have heard of it, never actually seen one, but I have heard of them. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I have one. So. so this is one of those things where, you know, you just kind of learn over time, really. So there's going to be a lot of variance. You know, when you're baking, how done do you want things to be? Cookies, for instance, can be a really challenge because 
When you take them out of the oven, they are actually not done. You actually have to let them sit a couple minutes. And so I have burned my share of cookies because I think that they need a little bit more time. And it turns out I misjudged how they are supposed to look in the oven. Okay. Um, so it's a lot of it is trial by fire and trial by error. Um, you know, you learn your oven and what, you know, how it works. And so you'll, you'll learn over time with cakes. It'll tell, you know, you can do things like, you know, when you take it out, you know, insert a fork into the center of it. Does it come out moist or does it come out dry? Right. Out okay. Moist, give it a few more minutes. If it comes out dry, you know, it's done. If it's too burnt on top, then, you know, it might be overdone. Um, mm -hmm. there are talking meat thermometers that you can get as well. I personally have never used one, but with, um, like what type of things do you like to cook or do you not know yet? Um, no, I like to cook like more on the stove, but like, like, um, stuff like, like rice, mac and cheese, stuff like that. Um, okay. stir fries, um, you know, like hamburgers, hot dogs, stuff like that. Um. So I've done that stuff like that. I'm just so more nervous when you with could, bacon. Okay, was, was, okay, so bacon. So yeah, that like, is something what? No, I was like, I, I I know how to cook stuff like that, but my I'm more nervous when it comes to baking things like cookies and so I've never always I've never done that on my own. Okay. Um, like I said, I am I cook more than I bake. I cook both on the stove and in the oven, but Cookies, um, you know, it's going to be, you know, you just have to be willing to experiment, you know, um, follow the recipe and its instructions. You can give it, you know, do, do the precise time. In this case, it says nine minutes. So I did nine minutes. Right. I could have been a little bit ca less cautious and then done eight. Um, you know, then let it set for five minutes and see how it looks. The cake, like I said, cakes and brownies, you're going to know if it um, is in the center or not pies. I've never really done a pie, but you know, how does it, you know, is the top bubbling? A lot of recipes will also tell you how things are supposed to look, you know, when they are done. And, right. But, and that can sometimes be visual, but like I said, you can, that's where you can use your fork. You can take your oven mitts or, um, I know Liz who I think is still on the call recommends fire gloves. And you can kind of use that to feel the surface of whatever you take out of the oven and just try to gauge how that feels. Um, okay. You know, use your fork. Like I said, fork will tell you, you know, stab it in the center does, and then feel the fork. Does it feel moist? Does it feel dry? Um, and uh, anybody else out there, if there's any techniques you use to uh, help with baking, raise your hand and uh, we'd love to hear from you on that or anything else related to uh, cooking. Um, I will mention real, uh, briefly with kitchen safety, of course, you can do things like, you know, cook on a lower heat if you're doing stovetop cooking to make sure that... Um, it may take longer, but you know, you can cook on a slightly lower heat to make sure that you're not gonna cause any fires or anything like that. Um, it's quite a few raised hands. Okay, then let's get to them. All right. After, um, is Anne? Anne, hey, yeah. Um, hi, um, this is Anne. Um, so did you say that? Did you say that you put something in with the oven cold and then? add it to the number of minutes that you're cooking it so that you, you don't feel safe. yeah if you don't feel safe dealing with a hot oven that's what i would do is so what if you could say say if you're doing cookies and if you know your oven takes 15 minutes to reheat then put it in turn on the oven and then when you set set your timer right away and you know in this case left, by the way. okay good to know so in that case you'd set it for 22 minutes and you're factoring the time for your oven to preheat. So you can give it like five minutes or so to preheat and then start timing. Yeah, well, just or just include that in your timer. That's what I would do. Yeah. I, I would include the five minutes when you set the time. So nine plus do five. Do you use something. a glove that comes all the way, most of the way up your wrist? To take stuff out, I do, but I'm, you know, um, I, I do use fireproof mitts. Um, 
and uh, those work out really well. Just make sure you reach straight in because I reached too far up one time and my mitt caught on fire because I touched the top of yep. the oven yep. accidentally. Yep, that can happen. Um, it helps to have good spatial awareness. Remember, your shelves are going to be lower down than the top of your oven. All right, thank you, Anne. I want to make sure we get Welcome. to everybody. Who do we have um, next? Next up is Tony's iPhone. Tony's iPhone. So do we have Tony or DJ? No, no, it's Tony this time. All right. But my question to you was, um, uh, you answered my first one because I was wondering what kind of mitts did you use? Now, my second question to you is, um, did you make your own cookies or did you um, buy them at the store? I bought these at the store. These are the Nestle Toll House cookie doughs, dough morsels. I just placed them on the sheet and put them in the oven. So I, okay. I cheated for today's cooking call. So. Oh, okay. All right. That's what I was just. That's what I was wondering. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you. Great and question. You're welcome. Monica had her hand raised. Monica. Hey, Herbie. Um, I just wondered if there was anything besides the ID mate scanner that you use other than a phone, if anyone else could recommend something like that. Thank you. So somebody did recommend the pen friend earlier. Um, I can't think of anything. You could probably, I wonder if you could use, if you have those Pearl cameras, you know, like that I meant for OCR, you know, I wonder if those would work to scan products. It wouldn't scan the barcode, but maybe like the actual product itself. Um, if uh, anybody else has any recommendations, uh, then raise your hand and we will get to you. I'm now going to uh, real quickly take the uh, cookies out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead and turn the oven off. And I'm going to open. And I'm going to turn my head to the side here. I don't need to face it. And grab the sheet, take it out, close the oven, and set her. I think it should be safe to set, set on the counter. Yep, um, to let the cookies cool off. All right, who do we have next? Uh, no more hands. No more hands. Okay. Um, trying to think about oh my losing my headphones here so don't talk to me for just a um second um okay so do you have groceries delivered or does somebody pick pick them out for you i have my groceries delivered and i will use i like to use walmart these days but i've also used instacart in the past back before these services and i and i used um instacart you know pre-covid back before these services were an option i did my own shopping i would go to the store and i it was a lot better experience when i actually had a dedicated volunteer but i also have used courtesy clerks and those experiences range from good to interesting um if you are not comfortable with the grocery delivery apps and you do go grocery shopping have a list it helps if you can give them like a printed shopping list um but i find the delivery apps a lot better experience myself Okay, we've got five minutes left. So if uh, this is the last uh, opportunity you guys have for any questions, comments, do we have any raised hands? No, not nope. so far. Not so far. Um, I will mention again real briefly with the phone, you know, for scanning products, you do have a multitude of options. Um, Sometimes, one other thing I will mention actually real quick for identifying products is um, if you know what the product is, but you want the instructions, apps like Instacart and Walmart are really great for that. Oh, especially there is Instacart. a raised hand now. Oh, we do have a raised hand. Okay. Um, You're Anna? Anna. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just, I have tried um, SuperSense recently. Um, 
but I, I have like, I don't know if anybody else has this trouble, but I really have trouble trying to aim like the camera. Yes. Like, I don't know if anybody has any tips to kind of like how, how you can like angle it or aim it or something. So this great topic um, for the various iPhone discussion things, actually, um, you know, for instance, the iBug mini buzz, we can definitely, no, 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 it's a, it is, it's a good question. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. It, it's a very good question. And that's why I still like to use the barcode scanner. So that that's not what I'm saying at all. It, it, that was no, a very good question. It, we're, we're running short on time. That's the only, yeah. uh, if anybody has any quick tips they'd like to offer for a aiming the camera, um, please speak up now. So the thing is like the, it really depends on which one you, I like seeing AI because I will do two methods with that. I will use the short text feature where sometimes I just need the basic idea of what the product is. So I'll just kind of see what it reads to me and just let it read out loud. Um, the barcode scanner is great when it works. You just have to kind of keep, it, it'll make like a lot of guiding noises and hopefully you finally, you know, get it. Um, but that's, that's why I think it's a shame that the barcode scanners are going out of style because they, yeah. the way they were designed more for the blind in the sense of they helped with the camera aiming and, you know, um, but and that's why i don't like the phone as much and that's where some people will use be my eyes or ira because of that right all right, right. yep um thank you no you're welcome and super sense you know again some of these things it just takes a lot of practice a lot of um patience don't scan cylindrical objects with the phone that's one trick i will tell you um, flat boxes can be better. Things without seams, I have the best luck with for finding the barcode. Um, but you can also try, like I said, the various scanning modes, like the document scan, try that, try the short text, because it'll read what the camera is seeing. Um, I forget the terms for super sense off the top of my head because I'm more so more used to seeing AI, but I have there's played like with super a, sense. smart scanners on the yeah. and there's I forget what else, but um, and don't play with the, it when yeah. you're hungry. That's the worst time. I, uh, Only a minute left. Yep. I'm so sorry. that is a great no no no. You're fine. That that was a very good que that that's a very good <laughs> question, and I really wish we had more time to go yeah. into that and um guy we do have um we do have to get going i want to thank melissa for hosting i want to thank our uh, streamer i want to thank everybody who took the time to uh, listen or participate you are all very much appreciated we will be back in a couple of weeks i have not fully decided what i'm going to um make just yet, but I hope this uh, call has been helpful to folks today. And until next time, this is Herbie Allen. There's some other great calls on ACB happening today. Make sure you are subscribed to the list, community at acb.org. And with that, we will see you all next time. I'm heading over to the coffee clutch.